I think to me, the magic of plein air painting is in the relationship between the artist and their environment. It's not so much about the painting itself, but about being present in the moment. Just detaching from the rest of the world and truly taking in a space for what it is. It gives you time to appreciate and reflect and time to breathe. It's too easy, especially in today's world, to get caught up in the bustle and forget the beauty because it is beautiful and painting in nature gives me the opportunity to remember that. Once you start painting outdoors, you start to see the world a little bit different. Start noticing the nuances that you normally would overlook. Once you learn to appreciate a rock or a branch, suddenly everything is something worth admiring. And I think that's what makes it worth doing. Hi, I'm Alex Foltz. Uh, we're here in Vermont. We're gonna do a little bit of plein air painting. And we've got this beautiful sumac tree over here. Uh, I have a bit of an idea that I wanna test out with this one. It'll be uh, a little different than some of the other paintings we've done. Uh, sometimes when you're out on location, you see something that inspires you, but the way that it is lit or the environment that it's in might not be exactly what you're looking for. And um, part of a lot of painting is sort of nudging details around in the way that best suits the idea that you have. Um, I've always been a big fan of that sort of golden light on a stormy day where there are distant storm clouds that make the sky dark, but you're looking at a tree or a building and it's being lit by uh, this beautiful golden light. And that's what I wanna try to attempt to do with this tree here. Um, it's certainly gonna be a little experimental. Uh, these things don't always work out the way you plan, but it's certainly worth trying. And we're gonna see where this idea goes today. I'm using the uh, usual color palette here of burnt umber, ultramarine blue, cadmium yellow light, alizarin crimson, and titanium white. Uh, this is a pretty limited palette. Um, I like working this way for a couple of reasons. Uh, it actually makes me feel like I have more freedom of choice with my colors because I have to mix every color from scratch. Um, it, it keeps me away from the temptation of just dipping into a color straight out of the tube and kind of accepting whatever that gives me. Um, with this palette, every color has to be mixed by hand. And so you have a really wide range of colors that you can achieve and that you'll be tempted to use as you work. And also, oil paint can be pretty expensive, so uh, using a limited palette is a good way to save a little bit of money on oil paint and lighten your load when you're uh, carrying all this stuff around in order to paint outside. I've got all my colors on my palette. I'll start by toning the palette, or the uh, canvas, rather. I like to tone my canvas with a brownish-orange color. Um, Mostly just to knock back some of that bright white of the raw canvas, but also because I like uh, the way that this brownish orange color shows through in the final painting. It tends to sort of help your colors lean in the same direction and tie them all together. And occasionally I'll let 
a few bits of this tone uh, show through in the final painting um, by just leaving gaps in the paint that I lay on top. I like the effect that that gives. There we go. It's a bit dark, but I will take a paper towel to it to dry off the surface and see if I can take off a little bit of that extra paint. There we go. Because it's so dark, I'll really try to dry this out so that my colors don't end up too dark at the end. Okay. All right, now that we've got it toned, I can start building up my composition with a little bit of a sketch here. A lot of the initial temptation, I think, is to put your uh, subject right in the center of your painting. But I think we'll get a lot more visual interest if we move it off-center, maybe over here a little bit. I'm just going to lightly sketch in the overall shape of this tree. Canopy. And we've got a distant horizon line. It's nice and unobstructed, which should make for an interesting scene where the tree really is the main focus and there's nothing else to distract. And the base of this tree will sit right about here. I do want uh, a little bit of foliage here around the base. So I'll kind of mark out where I want some of that to go. And way off in the distance, we have a couple of small trees. Nothing that will distract, but enough to convince the viewer that this is a real landscape and it's not just a desktop background of a rolling green hill with one tree on it. And of course the trunk of the tree, which we'll mark in. Because the canopy of this tree is fairly sparse and it's really only dense on the very top, we are going to see a lot of these uh, branches and the structure of the tree underneath. And that will add a lot of interesting complexity. I want to mark out the main parts of that structure now before I get too deep into the rest of this.
I don't want to overdo it because a lot of this will get painted over as we work. And there is a bit of a fence here, which I think uh, could make something interesting if I decide to leave it in, but I'll leave that for later and see how it looks with just the tree first. And I'll take a step back and see how I feel about this composition. Alright, I think I like that. So with that, let's go ahead and jump right into it. I think for the cloudy sky in the distance, I'll use this brush. Um, the bristles are very long, fairly soft. Uh, so what this brush is going to do is kind of like allow a lot of chaos to come through in the brush strokes. It takes away a little bit of my control. Um, but that will uh, stand in a really nice contrast to the, the rigid structure of all of these branches. So I'll start by mixing up the color I'd like for the sky. Now for a cloudy overcast sky, I'm mostly using heavy mixtures of brown and blue. I may do a touch of my white in there and maybe a touch of red, but it's going to be heaviest uh, with my ultramarine and my burnt umber. And I'll just start laying in some color here. I am not trying to be particularly careful about this. I really want a lot of this chaos to shine through in this sky. And this will be one of the rare occasions where my focal point will be brighter than most of the sky. Typically you don't see this in a sunnier scene, but in a scene like this, it will really lend to the mood. Okay, I don't want to overdo the sky too much. I certainly want there to be some interest, but uh, it's acting mostly as a backdrop for this tree to stand out in front of. And the same with the grass, so I'll go ahead and move on to the, the grass in this scene as well leaving the best for last here. And again, I want that moody, stormy look, so... I will lean this green of the grass towards blue. Kind of keep that... that overcast feel. Now notice that even though I've gone with a much darker sky in this painting, my grass and the ground itself is still darker 
thin the sky. And as I come forward, I will let that green become a little more saturated. Step back and take a look. I'm going to kind of let my brush dance across the surface a bit here. I want to sort of cheat some detail in by letting my brush strokes be very textured. And because we want light to be hitting this tree, it only makes sense that some of the surrounding area on the ground would be catching some light too. So I'll mix up a color for that. Just to get an idea. I'll lean it a little bit in the orange direction. That way I can kind of get this gold and light in here. Just a little bit. And I'm just lightly letting this brush skitter across the surface, keep some of that texture in there. Don't want to overdo it. Just enough to get the point across. And as we move into sort of refining this a little more, I'll ditch that brush and grab one that gives me just a little more control. I want to reestablish this horizon line back here, so trying my best to match that color. Okay. And again, I want to make sure that that grassy hill in the distance is a bit darker than my sky. And the distant trees even darker still.
<coughs> well, I've got this nice dark greenish color. I'll come in and put some of the shadows that will be in the base of this brush. Now wherever your focal point is in your painting, it's a, kind of, it's a good idea to make that sort of the, the part of the scene that has the highest contrast. Uh, that kind of helps draw the eye to that spot. And that's what I'll be doing with the tree here. Um, even in the underside of the canopy, I want to make sure that it is nice and dark. That way, it stands out against the sky and so that the shadows of the tree and the areas of the tree where the light is hitting it directly stand out from each other. Again, stepping back to see it from a distance. All right. Now, with most of the branches in this tree, they will be a lot more meticulous to paint, uh, much finer detail. And so I think I'm gonna focus mostly on the canopy first. Um, <clears throat> it's easier to paint your details over the top of your looser, more expressive brush strokes. So I'll focus on this canopy and it will also give me the opportunity to figure out how bright I want this, this light that's hitting the tree and sort of what color direction I want it to be pushed in before I um, add that light to the rest of the tree as well. I certainly still wanna be in, in green territory here, but I love that golden light. So there will be just a touch of red here. I'm going to mix two greens, one that sort of transitions between the fully shadowed leaves and the ones that are catching the direct light. And I'll start with that transition color.
where this color starts to uh, bleed over into the darkest shadows is where I want to focus on putting the texture. Because I'll still come in on top of this with another lighter orange or green afterwards. So the areas that will be painted over yet again are not areas I'm super concerned about like giving a, a final finalized appearance. I'll step back again. Okay. I like that. Now we can bring in some of that lighter color I mixed and see how that plays with these other colors. Hopefully well. Ah, yes, okay, there we go. The sumac has a very specific, specifically shaped leaves here. And I won't have the time out here on location to paint them all exactly as they appear. So as I paint, I'm kind of looking for little cheat ways to uh, show what that, what that texture looks like. I kind of like how this is working. So really what I'm doing is just quick downward strokes to show that there's an almost fern-like or spiky uh, nature to these leaves. You may see me kind of dabbing my finger here just to soften the edges of some of my brush strokes. like that quite a bit. And I'll sort of change the angle that I'm coming at this from as I move around the curve of the tree. I want it to feel like these leafy bits are sort of pointing out from the center. And I know I'm making a lot of changes to this scene, but I really am using what's directly in front of me to inform sort of the shape of what I'm painting and only really changing the light.
And these sumac trees have what I believe is sort of like these <coughs> growths of, of pollen coming off of them that are a slightly brighter yellow than the leaves themselves. So to catch that, I'll mix up a brighter yellow color, maybe with a touch of red, and, and I'll throw those in here and there, hopefully just to get the point across. And sort of this iconic feature of this tree is present. Might help to go a tad brighter here. There we go. And again, to help sell this idea of the light, I'll take just a, a touch of this same brighter yellow mixture and introduce it into the grass down here. I don't want to overdo it but just a little here and there can help. Maybe just to illustrate that there are some breaks in the clouds, I'll add a touch of this same yellow into areas of the background. Show that those areas are also catching just a little extra light. And now that I've got most of that established, I'll come in and start working on the trunk of the tree. For this I want a color that's very close to black so that we can stick with that high contrast idea. And anytime I want to mix a color that's close to black, 
I'll do a mixture of burnt umber, alizarin crimson, and ultramarine blue. And with this larger brush, I'll just focus on the main branches and the trunk of this tree. When I want to work on the smaller branches scattered throughout, I'll move on to a more pointed detail brush for that. Okay. Now what's really going to end up bringing this trunk to life is when I add the light to it. But for now, I just want to focus on the structure of all of these branches up here. And I think the best way to do that would be to just take some time and be patient. But before I do, I want to add a couple of little gaps in these leaves. And that'll help just illustrate the, the sparsity of the canopy on top. All right. And 
think I'll throw just a little bit more interest into the sky with maybe the suggestion of a few areas where the clouds are almost breaking, but not quite. There we go. Feels like it's doing the trick. I'll come on I'll come in with my uh, smaller detail brush okay. and start to mark in a few of these little branches Again, we want to hint at this very complex uh, branch structure up here. Lots of intersecting lines. And I'm making sure not to paint them too thick. Or else they'll immediately feel more cartoony than I'd like them to.
And what's really gonna tie this together is gonna be the light. So I'll throw a few more branches in and then we can throw some of that light on the trunk of the tree and see what that feels like. And with this much bright light hitting a subject like this, you might get just a little bit of light bouncing off the grass and back onto the other side of the tree. So I'm gonna take this paper towel and wipe back some of this paint. That will sort of give us a slightly lighter and nicely textured brown color to work with there. And what I want to try to do here, and we'll see if it works. If it doesn't, I can always paint over it. But I want to try to actually take the paint away um, and sort of peel it back to that white canvas rather than adding paint. So I'll take a little bit of mineral spirits on my brush. And I'll come in and sort of scrub into the area that I want the light to hit. And again, I'll come back in with my paper towel and wipe that away. All right. And just to add a bit of texture, this tree has some interesting uh, moss growing on it. So I'll take a little bit of green on my brush and just kind of dabble it in and see what that feels like.
coming in and just highlighting a few spots on these branches where I want the light to be shining through and illuminating them. Just a couple little places here and there. just for a touch of finer detail I'll grab a knife any any kind of knife uh, but specifically a palette knife is good for this uh, and just scrape in a few branches that I want to be catching light and this is great if you don't have a brush that's small enough to paint this kind of detail in yourself We do have some of these, some of this tall grass and bushes down here. I'll just come in with a slightly smaller brush, throw in a few marks to just indicate that there are leaves down here and that's what's causing all of this shadowed area. It really doesn't take much, just a few marks. I think with that, we can call it done and give it a signature.